Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This is our final experimental lab of the semester, experiment 12, and this lab is all about antibiotics. It's kind of a fun lab, um, fairly simple. It's nice to end on, on this kind of note. And we're gonna cover two general topics in this video. First, we're gonna look at bacitracin and optochin susceptibility, um, and we'll be able to see how we determine whether or not bacteria are resistant or susceptible to these two antibiotics. And then we'll look at the Kirby-Bauer method in a separate video. Um, the Kirby-Bauer method is more of a, it's a very efficient method of screening one bacterial species for uh, susceptibility to a large amount of antibiotics. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, what are antibiotics? So antibiotics, to put it as simply as possible, they inhibit bacteria, okay? They inhibit bacterial growth. And there, these are just two examples, bacitracin and optochin. These are the two we're gonna look at in, in this course. Um, but they are a, a, a diverse array of chemical structures, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different antibiotics available. And overall, they're going to inhibit bacterial growth. Now, in general, they're gonna inhibit bacterial growth by usually one of two mechanisms, generally. They're either going to directly kill the bacteria, just kill them, um, and that, that's called being bactericidal, um, or they're just going to inhibit the growth, basically slow them down but not kill them. That's called being bacteriostatic. Okay, we're not going to really worry about that so much, but the point is to understand what the antibiotics do. They're designed to slow down either by just simply slowing them down or killing bacteria. Okay, and you guys probably know from just, you know, culture, you know, that when people have a bacterial infection, they go to the physician and a lot of times the physician will prescribe an antibiotic. Okay, um, they prescribe some antibiotic and the antibiotic then is used to um, kill that bacteria. So to, to reverse the bacterial infection. But there's a problem. Okay, bacteria are extremely resourceful. Um, even for being these little guys that we manipulate in the lab, they're extremely resourceful in the sense that over time, if you overuse an antibiotic on a particular species of bacteria, then those bacteria can become resistant to that, back, to that antibiotic, okay? Um, a great example of this is MRSA. So some of you have probably heard of MRSA. It's an abbreviation, MRSA. Um, MRSA is a highly uh, pathogenic bacterial strain of Staphylococcus aureus. MRSA stands for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. That means that this particular strain of Staphylococcus aureus is no longer able to be killed by the, by the antibiotic methicillin because they're methicillin-resistant. And it turns out there's a lot more cases of being resistant than you would think. Um, and so what we're going to be able to do in this lab is tell whether or not a particular species is resistant to an antibiotic or whether or not they're susceptible. What susceptible means is that the bacteria is able to be killed or inhibited by that antibiotic. Okay, so we're gonna have two results in this first video, either resistant or susceptible. Now let's look at the actual test. And so here we're gonna be doing a simple interpretation of antibiotic, that's misspelled, antibiotic susceptibility, okay? And here I have a plate. On the left side, I have one species. This is, you know, the left species. Over here on the right, I have another species. It's a different species on the right, okay? These disks right here, okay, contain an antibiotic, okay? So what you would do is you would plate the bacteria and you'd put one of these discs on the plate, okay? Um, sometimes you'll put uh, more than one disc, it just depends. Um, here I have two separate species, so I'm putting the same disc on the left and right. We're gonna suppose that disc contains the antibiotic bacitracin, okay? Now, let's think about it. If all this, all this smear, all of this is colonies of bacteria, okay? If the colonies of those bacteria were resistant, I would not to expect to see any bacteria die, right? Because they're resistant to that particular antibiotic, which in this case is bacitracin. However, if those bacteria were susceptible, I should expect to see an area where uh, those bacteria are dead, 
okay? And that area where they're dead, if the bacteria are susceptible, is called the zone of inhibition. So if you look around this disc right here where the uh, antibiotic is contained, at least initially, you see that there's a zone of clearing that uh, manifests as a circle that uh, just exists around the disc, okay? And this circle can be small or it can be very large. But the presence of a zone of inhibition, an area where there's no bacteria, where you can clearly see clearing, that's a sign that you have susceptibility, okay? So um, now let's answer these questions right here. Which species, the left or the right, is susceptible to bacitracin? Well, it would be susceptible, again, I misspelled that, it would be susceptible if you see that zone of inhibition. Well, here I see a zone of inhibition, an area around that disc where there's no growth because the growth was inhibited there. So the bacitracin was initially contained in this disc, but when you incubate this, the bacitracin diffuses out radially from that disc and inhibits bacteria around it. So because I have that inhibition, this species on the right is susceptible. And generally when we want to indicate bacteria is susceptible, we don't use like plus or minus, we use S for susceptible. So this bacteria gets the S, it's susceptible. Now, the bacterial species on the left side, this bacteria is resistant to bacitracin. The reason it's resistant is because look, around this disc, I don't have any clearing. I have no zone of inhibition around this disc. Um, there's just clean growth right around this disc. Therefore, the species on the left is actually resistant, meaning it's unable to be killed by the antibiotic. Okay? And for resistant, we give it the letter R. So that's the result. So when you record the results of either a bacitracin or an optogen test in this course, you're either going to use an R or an S. S for susceptible, meaning it has a zone of inhibition, and R for resistant. Okay? Now, a couple of things that I want to make clear about this that are kind of important. One is, I'm not even going to do a separate slide on optogen because it's going to be exactly the same. You're going to have a disc that's plated in bacteria. When you pull it out of the incubator, you look for a zone of inhibition. And if there is one, it's susceptible. If it does not have the zone of inhibition, it's resistant. So the way you interpret bacitracin versus optogen is identical. Okay? For all we knew, this could have been an optogen test. Okay? If there's a zone of inhibition, it's susceptible. If there's no zone of inhibition, it's resistant. That's pretty much as simple as it gets. The other thing I wanted to mention, which kind of is a medical application of this that you might find interesting, is um, many hospitals, if someone has a pretty serious bacterial infection, they'll actually do tests very similar to this. They'll test antibiotic susceptibility. So if you are determined to have a bacterial infection, they take a sample from you, they figure out what species it is. Um, let's say it was a, uh, a Staphylococcus aureus infection, Staph aureus. They're going to give you an antibiotic, hopefully, to treat that uh, infection. But it wouldn't make sense to give you an antibiotic that the Staph aureus is resistant to, right? That would do absolutely no good. So what they'll do with the particular species that uh, they got from you, they'll test that to see which antibiotics work against it. And they would clearly, if this was Staph aureus, they would use this one on the right because the strain that they pulled from uh, your infection clearly is susceptible to this antibiotic. So yes, this has a me medical application. You would only give someone an antibiotic for which that species of bacteria is susceptible. If they're resistant, it does no good. And it can actually propagate even more resistance, stronger bugs, so to speak. All right, so hopefully this makes sense to you. In the next video, we're actually going to discuss the Kirby-Bauer method. Um, this is a much more efficient way to screen a species for a large amount of antibiotics. We'll cover that next. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.